Grandparents raising grandchildren. It's nothing new. What is new is how the opioid crisis is forcing more and more grandparents and aunts and uncles into providing safe homes for kids at risk. And the numbers are off the charts and growing. The problem, there is no way to track these so-called kinship families because they often happen before child welfare officials get involved. Right now, advocates believe that more than 15,000 grandparents and guardians are raising children outside the state's foster care system with little or no financial help from the government. News Center Maine's Vivian Lee goes in depth tonight to look at how these uh, newly made families are really working off the radar here. Well, as you can imagine, Cindy and Lee, many of these relatives are providing love and stability to children of parents struggling with addiction, mental health issues, or who are behind bars. With the number of foster homes decreasing across the state, advocates say raising children outside of the system is saving millions and millions of taxpayer dollars, but many of these families are being left out in the cold. Dawn Danforth was just 10 months old when she was dropped off by a relative at her great aunt and uncle's house. Born three months premature, her parents were struggling with addiction issues and couldn't care for the baby. She had a 5% chance of living and we just fell in love with her the minute we saw her. And we knew God had a purpose for her and somebody had to fill, you know, make sure that she was taken care of. With an older son of their own and a teenage daughter adopted from India, the couple unexpectedly were parents again. A few months later, the baby's mother and grandmother showed up to take Dawn home with them. Two years later, the toddler was brought back to the couple. Both women were dealing with substance use and mental health problems. During that time, Dawn experienced things that still haunt the seventh grader today. She saw a lot of fighting, drinking, people taking drugs. Jesus and having seizures from drugs. A lot of things that scared her that she didn't understand. They were all fighting and... That's something you do remember. It doesn't leave you. Because DHHS never got involved with Dawn's parents, the couple did not have to become licensed kinship caregivers to raise her. Adopting the little girl would have meant terminating the rights of her parents. Instead, they became her legal guardians. She has the right to love them and they have the right to love her. According to DHHS, the department gives priority to family members after a child is removed from their biological parents. Those relatives must become yep. licensed by the state. A process that involves passing background checks, undergoing trainings and certifications. The home where the child lives must pass a fire safety inspection. While they face many of the same challenges, kinship families don't get the same government supports as licensed foster parents. Besides providing the basics of food, clothing and shelter, many of the children they're caring for have mental and physical disabilities and they have to make sure they get the services they need. Licensed foster parents can receive between $25 to $75 a day per child based on their medical needs. Foster families also receive an allowance for clothing and diapers based on age and need, plus support for childcare and transportation. Legal guardians can get temporary assistance for needy families or TANF, about $150 a month per child, but the amount goes down for other children after that. The couple have never been able to retire. They work full time to provide for Dawn. I don't think that these kids deserve any less than any other child, but they're never going to go without. Dawn qualifies for Maine Care, the state's version of Medicaid. She undergoes counseling to process her emotions that she experienced at such a young age. Where are they, she asked. Feelings nine-year-old Uriah and his six-year-old brother Bentley know all too well. They were removed by Child Protective Services at a very young age. The parents were in a really bad mental state. They weren't getting any help. Their parents struggled with addiction. The boy's father was in jail. Their father's brother, J.D. Carl, and his wife, Alicia, offered to raise them. The boy's older sister went to live with another relative. At just 10 months and four years old, the brothers had huge needs. Born weeks early, they needed treatments for asthma and other respiratory problems. Uriah watched his parents be arrested and still worries about the next meal. We have food in our fridge. We have food in our cupboards. You know, there's heat, there's lights. Nobody's coming in to get you. The couple became licensed foster parents so the boys wouldn't be placed in the system and raised by strangers. Following a lengthy two-year process, the boys were officially adopted as their own. Over the years, the family is blending, especially after the arrival of the couple's three biological daughters, Jessalyn, Katie, and Jason Lee. 
Watching nurturing relationships in their own family have helped the boys tremendously. I think it made it a little bit easier for them to realize that it's okay to be held, it's okay to be hugged. The couple says, though, they wouldn't have been able to even consider adoption without the financial help from the state. But that is the reality of thousands of kinship families caring for kids at their own expense and under the radar of the state's child welfare system. These are invisible kids. These are invisible problem kids who are at risk and someone is trying to take care of them the best they can. Senator Bill Diamond lobbied for changes to the state's child protective services system following the deaths of Marissa Kennedy and Kendall Chick. The 10 and 4 year olds died at the hands of parents and caregivers despite the fact child protective services workers had been alerted to reports of abuse and neglect. Diamond has met with advocates who believe as many as 18,000 families are raising children on their own with very little help. Maine gets $23 million from the feds every year, but it goes to cover the costs of caring for children in state custody. He worries about the tolls this hardship is having on some caregivers, putting children they are trying to protect at risk. The more that pressure builds, the more likely that child is going to be the result of the frustration and they're going to strike out at that child. And we as policymakers and as the legislature need to get a better handle on how many kids that are out there in that situation. We work with over 5,000 families across the state. And we know that we only touch the tip of the iceberg. Bed Hoxie works with the Adoptive and Foster Families of Maine and the Kinship Program. The nonprofit provides support groups, training, and other resources in every county in Maine. The organization also provides new and gently used clothing, backpacks, and necessities for babies and toddlers to families coming into the system for the very first time. Hoxie herself has adopted more than a half a dozen foster children and is currently raising a grandchild outside the state's foster care system. She knows some kinship families, especially grandparents, don't go to court to try to adopt the children in their care or contact DHHS for fear that they will lose contact with those children altogether. They feel like they're putting the children at, at risk, so they just stay quiet and keep doing what they're doing without any kind of financial support. You rinse your face off with some water. Back at the Carl's home, the kids are getting ready for bed. The boys are doing well in school and love sports, but despite the foundation of love and stability, Worries remain if it will be enough to keep them from going down the same paths as their biological parents. Donna has nagging questions about Dawn as well. Are children more apt to be addicted to drugs if they've seen their parents? But this 13-year-old knows her path will be different despite her parents' history with addiction. I'm going to make sure to never do that because I'm going to be smart. I know. That's what I'm counting on. Now, a new federal law called the Family First Prevention Services Act would provide funding for states to set up programs for at-risk children and their families to help keep them out of foster care. And that funding could be available within the next year or so. Now, if you'd like more information about resources, training, support groups, and legal guardianship information, all you have to do is text the word kinship to this number, 207-828-6622. You'll get a link to all the inf this information and more. Lee and Cindy? Wow, Great really story. interesting. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you.